Hey guys, Ben Pearson, the Roadster Tracker, and we're going to talk about an object that has been talked about quite a bit in the recent days, and that is the Comet 2014 UN271 that also has the much more pronounceable name of Bernadelli Berenstein. Uh, it's the largest comet that we've ever seen by a significant factor, it is approximately 100 kilometers wide. So, you know, size of a large city, roughly, including a metropolitan area, but not huge. Um, this object has been discovered in 2014. We only have just barely begun to realize its trajectory. It's a pretty unusual you can see that it goes way, way out there. It goes to three tenths of a of a light year, so it goes out there quite a bit. We're probably not uh, going to find too many objects that are that far out there, actually. So this cometary object has a bit of a tail that we can see. It's about the furthest we've ever actually seen a tail from a comet. Only detectable through a telescope, the tail is made out of carbon dioxide and or ammonium, which are not particularly bright materials. You can see them, they'll kick off a little dust tail, but only with a super powerful telescope. Will it ever appear to be super, super bright? Well, not really. Uh, in order to do that, here, let's zoom in on the inner part of the solar system. You have to be pretty close to the sun. Only objects that are within the asteroid belt will tend to melt ice. There are more distant objects in the asteroid belt have ice, as do the moons of Jupiter. It stays on the surface all the time because the sunlight is just simply not enough to melt them. Um, as a result, this isn't going to be particularly bright. I think it's going to be somewhere between the moon of Pluto, Charon, or Pluto itself, maybe, if we get really lucky. And this is at its closest approach, which it is still pretty far from. Uh, so we're going to play this forward here. I'm going to increase the speed just a little bit. And we're going to talk about opportunities to visit this. So its closest approach is just beyond the orbit of Saturn. Uh, we could potentially send a spacecraft here. We'd have to launch it at such a time that it can fly past Jupiter on its way to the object. And the time where we would want to be doing that, I'm actually here, yeah, let's reverse time a little bit is roughly 2026 uh, that it would have to fly by Jupiter in order to get a nice flyby. Uh, let's just zoom on Jupiter. So at this point in time, it's uh, relatively close to the trajectory. And we get a little bit better right here. So if you do a flyby of Jupiter roughly here, then you can use its gravity to get you the rest of the way there, correct for whatever issues and so on and so forth. If we assume a New Horizon style mission where you can get to Jupiter in a little bit over a year, then you'd have to launch in 2025 or 26, something like that to be able to make it. It would be pretty rough, but it is technically doable. Um, I don't think it is of particular interest though, because even though this is the largest comet, there's a lot of other similar objects that are on the outer part of the solar system and a family called centaurs. And there are some that are actually about the same size. It'd be a lot easier to get to if we wanted to explore this kind of object. Why don't we take the easier ones to explore? Um, this is kind of an interesting phenomena overall, but it's not super uh, interesting per se. Uh, it's kind of blown up in the media as this super huge, cool event that, um, while it will be neat, and it is a very interesting object, it's not really going to fundamentally change that much.
hey, if I have slower sim speed, it seems to give better orbital parameters. Um, I would be in favor of sending a mission, but honestly, I don't think it's going to happen because there are a lot more interesting targets that are out there in the solar system, and we just don't have the resources. This would actually take a probably expendable Falcon Heavy or a Vulcan rocket to be able to make it there. Those are the only two rockets that are going to be operational in 2027, other than maybe New Glenn that could make it there. You have to have an efficient upper stage. Um, Starship could do something, although Starship is really meant to carry people relatively close and carry very, very massive targets, it'd be a little tricky to send it to here, although it is theoretically possible. Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for everything. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have about this or anything else. And thanks for sticking with me. Until next time, keep on tracking. Take care, guys.